An introduction to the ventilation cockpit. The ventilation cockpit is a trademark of Hamilton Medical and is available on their C2 ventilator and the Hamilton G5 ventilator. Now the ventilation cockpit, which is shown right here on the ventilators, is a nice tool. What it does is it provides patient information as in ventilatory status and patient's lung mechanics all in one place. So what's nice about this is I don't have to go to multiple screens. For example, a values page or a logbook page or a trends page. It's all in one area. Um, it also answers questions that the clinician wants to know, you know, and wants it all in one place besides going to, okay, the ventilator flow sheet or the trends or um, anywhere else you need to go to find all the data you know or the patient's lung condition. Uh, what a kind of ventilation do they need? Or when should I extubate the patient from mechanical ventilation? Now the ventilation cockpit is broken down into two segments. One is the dynamic lung. And the dynamic lung allows the practitioner to see um, the patient's lung mechanics. So it gives a visual representation. Here's an example of the dynamic lung. And this is a normal dynamic lung. And from the picture you can see it's broken down into where you can see the patient's resistance, compliance. Um, also, it gives you a visual representation of that. So I have a bronchial tree and it's nice and pink which is normal. However, if the resistance was higher, it'd be a different color and it'd be narrower. And also, if when the patient is spontaneously breathing, you can see the diaphragm. If you have the entitled CO2 software, you'll have an entitled CO2 measurement between the resistance and the compliance. Now here's an um, example with a patient with normal lung mechanics. As you can see, the resistance 9 and the compliance is 64. The bronchial tree is nice and pink, and you can see the lungs or look normal. Here's an example of a patient that's spontaneous breathing also with the mechanical ventilator. You'll see a patient breath by the diaphragm with the controlled breaths. Here's an example of a patient with COPD mechanics. And if you can't see the values or don't know the values, you can see from across the room that the patient's pulmonary mechanics are poor indicated by a very narrow bronchial tree and this red inflamed look and also these hyperinflated lungs. So it doesn't matter where you are in the patient's room as long as you can see this you know that their pulmonary mechanics are poor. And here's a patient with ARDS mechanics. As you see the resistance is normal and my bronchial tree is nice and normal However, my compliance is very low, so it's stiff. It makes the lungs look boxy. So the dynamic lung is a nice tool where I can get all my information in one spot. Uh, next, we can look at the vent status. And these are the patient's ventilatory status allows for six parameters and these can be customized by the operator on how they want to look. So it's broken up into many sections. One's oxygenation. You can see my oxygen and PEEP. Also we have CO2 um, elimination which is comprised of my expiratory minute ventilation and my peak inspiratory pressure and my spontaneous activity. I have a rapid shallow breathing index or and also percent of spontaneous breaths. You have this light blue area and this light blue area represents the winning zone and the user can configure this and when all these, these indicate what's going on currently with the patient and these are always moving based on changes you make or based on the patient's spontaneous activity. You have a timer here 
when all these are in the weaning zone, the timer is going to go off and show you how long they've been in the weaning zone. And there are also additional timers in each column to show you how long they were in the weaning zone in that certain column. As you notice, they were in the low peak range and the expiratory minute ventilation range before the spontaneous breathing. Now here's vent status, and this indicates a patient that needs a high ventilatory support, as indicated by my bars out of the weaning area. Of course, the patient's not spontaneous breathing at all, so they need the ventilator. Additionally, they're on a high amount of pressure, and their oxygen's not within limits yet. This next slide just shows that the patient has progressed. The oxygen's been titrated down, as well as it doesn't take as much peak inspiratory pressure to ventilate this patient. However, they haven't initiated any spontaneous breathing at all. So since it hasn't been met, the spontaneous activity, you notice that these timers are blank. It's not going to go off until they get into the weaning zone. This next slide shows that all the parameters have been made and the timer's set off now. And that is an overview of the ventilation cockpit. And as you can see, it's a very helpful tool which provides a lot of information in one place. It's very interactive. You don't need to look at your trends or numbers. It's all visual representation that's very simple to figure out. Thank you.